My name is Robin, Robin de Vries. I work in the research team of the Ocean Cleanup. And we are developing a fundamental understanding of the plastic problem in the seas and in the rivers. Uh, and my task is to develop new technologies to remote sense plastic. Uh, and that means to detect plastics without actually going into the water. Doing research, especially offshore, is very costly. Gathering samples by hand or flying airplanes to, to do surveys. So uh, satellites can be a very cost-effective tool to globally monitor plastic and to discover trends and accumulations that we haven't discovered yet. So this recent project is called uh, the SPOTS project, uh, which is an acronym for Spectral Properties of Submerged and Biofiled Plastic Litter. And it's funded by the European Space Agency. Basically, you can detect plastic by uh, looking at it with a special type of sensor, which is called the hyperspectral sensor. And this uh, type of sensor, it creates a fingerprint of the plastic that you're trying to observe. You, you might be familiar with a prism. Uh, when you shine light through a prism, it, uh, ref it refracts the light into different places and you can see a rainbow on the other end. And a uh, hyperspectral sensor is essentially doing the same thing. Uh, it takes the light as a whole and splits it up into a rainbow and beyond because the rainbow is only what you see with the naked eye, but then the actual hyperspectral parts that come beyond it are also very important for plastic detection. And so each type of plastic has its own unique fingerprint. In order to make a good assessment of what plastics are visible under what conditions, first of all, we had to think about what plastics are we going to uh, test for. And so we decided to create a standard set of samples, uh, which consists of eight different types of plastic at, the, at three different uh, thicknesses. Secondly, uh, we had to design our own uh, measurement tool. Um, and this consists of a, an, a water tank in a lab um, that allows the, the plastic to be clamped and to be put into different depths of water uh, while the, the, the sensor is scanning for the signal. And another important aspect is that when we collected these measurements, we want to put them to the test eventually. Um, and that means we test it into a real environment, which is the sea. We've collaborated with the University of Aegean and we decided to build a plastic target in the coastal waters of Greece um, and to fly a drone over it carrying a hyperspectral sensor. And this was actually the first, the world's first effort on doing uh, hyperspectral drone flights over water. Um, and we collected this very unique data set, putting essentially our, our method to the test. Um, thirdly, we also collected uh, samples of uh, biofiled plastics. Uh, so these are plastics that have uh, algae, bacteria and other organisms uh, growing on them. Um, and for that, we recently conducted those tests in Hawaii, where we also had to construct a customized uh, water tank. So it's three different sets of measurements at three different locations, um, leading to a very comprehensive data set and library. The outcome of this study uh, is really that we have a better understanding of uh, the capabilities of satellite remote sensing for plastic and we know a little bit better uh, when plastics are detectable by satellite and when not. Next steps forward to this project are really to make data public so that other researchers, other scientists can make use of the, the, the library that has been created. In a way this is a project that has been really testing the limits of satellite remote sensing. So instead of focusing what can be done and, and you know, creating a cool proof concept, we've really uh, tried to explore when, when this method would fail, actually. Uh, and we can demonstrate that in the data, you know, when, when plastic gets deeper and deeper into the water, this whole fingerprint uh, disappears. Um, and it, 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 yeah, it's pretty cool to be showing the limits of, of technology. It might not be a very popular message, uh, but it's a very useful one to the scientific community knowing where to venture and where not to. 
Um, and I think that's a great contribution to science also.